This is another kind of problem with work. A thick cable, 60 feet long, weighing 180 pounds, hung, hangs from a winch at the top of a crane. So here's your winch. And here's the cable. Okay. First question is how much work is it going to be to wind up the cable? So this is the situation, if you think about it, it's going to take us more force to crank this up when the whole cable is down because it's all weighing 180 pounds. And when it's up here and there's just a little bit, it won't take much force because all we can tell is how much is weighing, right? So maybe there's two or three pounds there, it's going to be easier for the winch to work. Um, so the variable force in this is because the force is the weight of the cable. So in this situation, it's actually kind of convenient to use the English units because it's pounds, but whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. We could also do it with newtons. Um, in any case, but we have to set it up a little bit differently because unlike the spring constant where we know Hooke's law is this, well, what's exactly the force here and what's the distance? So let's figure it out, but we'll figure it out very similar to how we figured this stuff out in the first place. If we take a small piece of this cable, delta x, and imagine moving that small piece all the way up, and then we're going to add up all those. So here's some xi star in that small piece. So to make, to take this little piece delta x all the way to the top, it has to move, we're going to, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we're going to take x equals zero to be the top here, right? So the distance from here to here is then xi star. So to move delta x to the top, the distance is going to be that x i star. So that's the distance. We know that work is force times distance. And we just have to figure out what the force is going to be. So we have to think about, all right, what is the weight of this thing, right? Um, so the total cable It weighs 180 pounds, but there's 60 feet of it, so that gives you 3 pounds per foot, which means that the weight of your little section delta x is just 3 pounds per foot times delta x, which is the distance, so we're going to have 3 delta x. So that's the force. Right? That's, that's the force that we have to counter in order to move it up, in order to counter the force of gravity. So that's going to tell me, if I write this up, to move this little piece all the way up, it's going to be my force times my distance, right? So that's xi star. So then if I think about that as summing all the way up the, all on the cable, I'm going to get i equals 1 to n of 3xi star delta x. But then, of course, I take n to infinity, and this becomes a nice integral, 0 to 60, right, that's the total amount of the cable, 3x dx, right? So that's easy enough. I get 3x squared over 2 from 0 to 60, and this guy ends up being 5,400 foot-pounds. So that's the amount of work to do the whole thing.
Now the second question is a little bit tricky almost because how much work to wind up 25 feet you're like okay well the setup's going to be the same thing instead of winding up the whole 60 i just go to 25 here true you do do that but you have to think about it because 25 feet is here i'm running that all the way up but this whole part also has a weight so this part also adds the process, right? So it's like I have a, an additional weight on the bottom that I have to count, counter in because even though I'm moving this part up, I'm also moving this part up with it. So sometimes you'll see variations of this problem where there's like a, a bucket on the end or something, I don't know, some other thing, some weight on the end. It's the same idea because that I still have to add in that additional bit, okay? So my total work is gonna be two pieces. So this is the work to uh, get the 25 feet to um, move. So this is the work to move the 25 feet and this second work is going to be move the rest. I'll just write move the rest. Okay. The thing about this second part is it's really easy because the weight of that other stuff doesn't change. The weight of the reason we have to do an integral is because the weight is changing here, right? Because you, you have less and less. This is just a constant amount. So you don't even have to do an integral for this second part. So let's see, the first part we already know. We just said we take the integral, not the 60, but of 25, and it's the same, right? So this is 3x squared over 2 from 0 to 25, which I wrote down what this is, because I don't know where I put it. There it is. Okay, 937.5. Now, for the second part, you can do it as an integral. You can do it as, a, but it's just an integral of a constant because the force is constant. It's just the weight of this bit and we're moving this whole bit up. Every point here moves up 25 feet. So you can just think of it as a constant thing moving 25 feet. So this is just going to be your force, which is your weight left over times the distance it moves I should put a dot right because there's a dot product really okay so the weight oh let's see so this was this was uh 60 minus 25 so this 15 so 15 feet times three feet per, uh, three pounds per foot. Sorry, I had it the wrong way. And then the distance it moved was 25, right? Because each one of these, we're taking this 25 and moving it up, each one of these is also moving up 25 uh, feet. So I have 15 times three times 25, which ends up being, uh, 2625. So my total work is going to be 937.5 plus 2625, which is 3262.5 foot pounds. So at least that makes sense. It's less than putting up the whole thing, but it's bigger than significantly bigger than half, right? So that's how you have to think about those.